fallen soldiers let us sing where no rockets fly no bullets wing our broken brothers let us bring to the mansions of the Lord. No more weeping, no more fight, no press pleading through the night. Just divine embrace eternal light in the mansions of the Lord where no mothers cry and no children weep we will stand and guard the sleep all through the ages safely keep the mansions of the Lord the mansions of Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this Trinity Sunday morning, also the weekend of the celebration of Memorial Day. You know, people, I've heard people wishing people a happy Memorial Day, and I think probably the the, uh, more appropriate term is to wish people a peaceful uh, Memorial Day in keeping uh, with really uh, respect for the holiday and what it is all about. This morning, we are sort of bookending Trinity Sunday uh, with Memorial Day. Uh, You just heard a Memorial Day piece, uh, and Dan will be playing a Memorial Day piece at the end of worship this morning. Uh, Our final hymn is actually a Memorial Day hymn as well today. Uh, Just by way of announcements, as we begin our worship this morning... uh, You will uh, notice that in the back of the church, there are little bios that can be picked up on people who wish to serve on our call committee. So uh, it would be well if you would read through those during the course of this week so that when we come together next Sunday for our congregational meeting, you will have an idea of who you will be voting for to serve on the call committee. If you are one of the people who has nominated yourself or has been nominated to serve on the call committee, uh, please be aware to mark your calendar. We have uh, training that we must go through on June 12th from 9 to 1. Uh, It will be a Zoom meeting. You'll be able to do it from your home. Uh, But if you want to serve on the call committee, that is something that uh, we all have to do. We on the council and anyone on the call committee uh, must do. So uh, please be aware of that. During the course of this week, we have our high school youth meeting on Tuesday evening. On Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock, we have our adult Bible study, and uh, we are looking at the gospel according to Mark. Uh, Some of the questions that uh, are answered in Mark's gospel, actually, we will be having those at the end of this summer in in our Sunday morning lectionary. So if you want to know a little bit more about what's coming, join us on Wednesday mornings. Uh, for the Gospel of Mark. Also, uh, looking ahead just a little bit on the calendar, on June 19th, uh, we have our Strawberry Festival coming up. Uh, We will have uh, all of the traditional events that we've had in previous years. Uh, We could still use a few more volunteers, so if you'd like to help, that would be great. Uh, In addition, this year we're having a car show, so uh, if you are into vintage cars, 
uh, you'll be able to have, you'll be able to see some of those here as well. Uh, however, if you just want to come and have fun and, and eat some strawberry shortcake, that's okay too. We need, we need everybody, both the preparers and, and the eaters. So that's a good thing. So those are the announcements for today. If you would turn toward the baptismal font, uh, we will begin our worship with the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, and your sins are forgiven. You are loved, and Jesus shares with you the abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This morning, as we do the Kyrie, I just want to share with you that this is a Kyrie. It's setting eight from our worship book, and it's a little different from the Kyrie's we have done. This morning, you all will sing the refrain uh, and I will sing uh, the verses uh, or the petitions of the Kyrie. And the Kyrie goes like this. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. For peace in the world, for the health of the church, for the unity of all. For this holy house, for all who worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. That we may live out your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor. That we may live out truth and justice and grace, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. For peace in our hearts, for peace in our homes, for friends and family. For life and for love, for our work and our play, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. For your spirit to guide that you center our lives in the water and the word. That you nourish our souls with your body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie 
a liaison on our world and on our way. Kyrie liaison every day. On our world and on our way, Kyrie eleison every day. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia! Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength and honor, blessing, and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia! Sing with all the people of God, and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty. The hem of his robe filled the temple, Seraphers were in attendance above him. Each had six wings, with two that covered their faces, and with two that covered their feet, and with two that flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. Ascribe to the Lord your gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe, Ascribe to, to the, the Lord, Lord the glory do, do God's, God's name. name. Worship, Worship the Lord, the Lord in, in the beauty, beauty of, of holiness. holiness. 
The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The, the Lord, Lord is, is upon the mighty waters. The voice, voice of the, the Lord, Lord is a powerful voice. voice. The, the voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord, the Lord makes, makes Lebanon skip like a calf, like a calf and, and Mount Hermon like, like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The, the voice, voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness, Lord Lord shakes the wilderness of, of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writh and stripes the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. The Lord, the Lord sits, sits enthroned, enthroned above, above the flood. flood. The, the Lord, Lord sits enthroned, enthroned as king forevermore. forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the spirit you put to death, the deeds of your body will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. For you do not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witnesses with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Hallelujah. Lift up your hearts and hear the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, 
God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There was a time in the not-so-distant past when on this Sunday of the church year, Trinity Sunday, following the hymn of the day, we would recite the Athanasian Creed. Confessing within the structure of Greek philosophy the theological truth of the triune nature of God. And each line of the creed answering an important question in the early life of the church. Explicitly and in detail outlining the identity of each person of the Trinity and clearly delineating the role of each in the history of creation, salvation, and sanctification. And having in today's gospel the nighttime visit of Nicodemus to Jesus, it seems as if someone decided that Jesus hadn't fully answered the questions of Nicodemus. So on this day, they lay the Athanasian Creed beside this gospel to make certain that both he and we get it, that we hear things right, receive things right, and say things right. And so it has been for hundreds of years that preachers have stood in the pulpit on Sunday morning and tried to define the Trinity for the congregation without committing heresy. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> The problem is this on a Sunday morning like this. The gospel doesn't make sense in light of the day, except that in his conversation with Nicodemus, Jesus does, in fact, talk about the Father and the Holy Spirit. And it seems that on this basis alone, this particular text is chosen. I want to look at this text, however, a little bit differently. First of all, I don't think Nicodemus gets nearly enough credit. Usually what happens when we have this text, whether it be uh, during cycle A or cycle B, uh, Nicodemus endures a pretty good amount of bashing because we set him up as a straw man, as someone who didn't understand, as someone who didn't get it, so we talk about his faithlessness, we knock him down, and then we roll over him repeatedly and send him on his way. But I think the truth is a little more complicated than that, and also I think works in Nicodemus' favor in that he is, after all, just one of us. Of course he came to Jesus by night, wouldn't you? Wouldn't I? Who knows, maybe he had to work during the day. He was, after all, a busy Pharisee. He may have had other things to do. Perhaps he didn't want the other Pharisees to know. Maybe he had questions he considered silly, and he was bringing those to Jesus, and he was afraid that he might be ridiculed in public. I would do the same thing if I were Nicodemus. I would have gone to Jesus if I dared at night. In fact, I do the same thing even now. I ask questions privately that I'm afraid to ask publicly. Some of you may remember that about a year and a half ago, my installation took place on Reformation Sunday weekend. And Dr. Tommy Robinson was the preacher that evening. He is uh, a doctor of hearing and audiology. He is the director of the Scottish Rite uh, Center for, for Speech and Hearing Disorders uh, at Children's Hospital in Washington, D.C. And he is a professor at Georgetown University. Well, I first met him because he was 
the academic chair of the Board of Trustees of the Lutheran Theological Seminary in Gettysburg, and I was the academic chair of the Lutheran Theological Seminary in Philadelphia. And we were coming together because as part of merging the two seminaries together in what would become United Lutheran Seminary, we had the responsibility of putting together the academic program, then figuring out what professors we would need and what professors we wouldn't need, and then going through the gentle work with people of trying to let them down easy, and then, of course, telling others that they were going to have to take on greater burdens. Well, you know how mergers go typically. One group dominates the other because one person dominates the other, and things don't work out as you might expect. And when mergers take place, everything's written out on paper. I mean, it's all there. I mean, it's, it's like written, it's, it's a business doctrine, and it gets put on the table, and you're supposed to just do it. But as with so many things in our lives, it doesn't really matter what's written on the paper, because if you don't have people who can work with one another, the stuff on the paper doesn't matter. Nothing will happen the way it is supposed to happen. So when Dr. Otami and I came together, we were probably both worried about the same thing. Am I going to be able to work with this other person uh, to get the work done? And I have to say that we were unusually blessed in that after about five minutes of speaking with him, I knew that this was a man with whom I would be able to work and that we would be able to get things done and that things would go well. He was not only gracious and caring and understanding, but he is one of those people who's the smartest guy in the room. He thinks at a different level than everybody else. He's one of those people that immediately sees the forest through the trees, and so he doesn't get bogged down. Well. Because of the fact that he is so gracious, uh, we not only got the work done, but we've, over the last oh, seven or eight years now, built a really good friendship. And I find myself going to him to ask all kinds of questions. Uh, during COVID, when I've wanted to know something, he's the doctor I call because he's down there in Washington, D.C. They hear a lot of things directly, and I know that I can get good information from him. And there is no question that I've ever laid before him where he said, Peter, that really is a dumb question. You should know the answer to that already. Instead, he knows where I'm coming from. He knows that I'm just trying to learn. I'm just trying to understand. And uh, I think it was probably about two years ago, you know, as the presidential race was heating up and, and people were saying that Joe Biden is losing it uh, because he uh, would stop in the middle of a speech and seem to be confused. Uh, I called Tommy up. I said, is that something that people need to be concerned about? Because he does have that habit of stopping. And he said, he said Peter, he said, I've known Joe Biden for years. He comes to the hospital several times a year to work with children who are stutterers. And that simply is the stutterer's way of getting their tongue back in sync with their brain. They stop, uh, they, they have to let their, their brain catch up, and then they move on. So he said it's nothing to worry about. But I've also asked him questions because he is black about what's happening in the black community and how things are received in the black community. And that's one of those areas that can get kind of touchy. But he has never said to me, Peter, that's a dumb question or that's a stupid question or you should already know that. Instead, he's always taken the time to explain to me, at least from his perspective, what things mean. He's not afraid to speak with me about issues of race, and I, therefore, am not afraid to speak with him about issues of race. Now, the reason I bring all of this up, because it's all about relationship in the end. 
And that's what the gospel is about this morning. It's about relationship. Outside of the 12 disciples, and perhaps Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, Nicodemus is the only person in the gospel who has a recurring role in Jesus' story. As a matter of fact, he appears three times in the Gospel of Mark. Here, this first time, he comes to Jesus and he's questioning. And I think we need to give him credit for his questioning. He comes to Jesus because he knows there's something different about him. We know that you are sent from God because no one can do the things you do apart from God. So he knows there's something different, but he doesn't understand. He wants to know. Jesus doesn't mock his faithlessness. Instead, he begins a conversation with Nicodemus. And I suspect that while we just have one part of it here and a couple other parts, that the conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus continued throughout Jesus' ministry until Nicodemus comes to full faith when he meets Joseph of Arimathea at the base of the cross and takes Jesus' body down. I think that as we look at Trinity Sunday, yes, indeed, it is about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They each, in fact, do have a role in our lives, but it is all about relationship. In the year King Uzziah died, in the year King Uzziah died, and how does it end? But whom shall we send? Whom shall we send? Send me. You see, it's relational. We can't just lay paper in front of people and expect that they are going to believe in God. We can't expect that people are going to come to faith by simply laying a doctrine in front of them or a creed and saying to them, this is what you need to believe in order to be saved. They need to see and to hear and to to understand. And the only way they will come to understand is by the relationships that we build with them, by the caring that we express, by the sharing that we do, by the listening to the stories that people are willing to share, and by sharing what we have to give. Here I am, send me. Here we are. Send us. Send us out into the world so that we may be the people who take the words of things like the Athanasian Creed and by the way we live and the things that we share and the compassion that we share turn those words into words that people can understand and thereby come to faith. It is not about all of those words. It is about the one word, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. As he came to Nicodemus, so he has come to each of us. And so we are sent to build relationships as Jesus built relationships, to walk beside people when they are hurting, to provide healing, to listen to their stories as Jesus listened to their stories and to build them up, that the gospel may be heard and that it may be lived. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, guard our hearts and keep our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our second hymn for today uh, is a beautiful hymn, actually. It may be new to you. It's called Bring Many Names. Uh, And one of the things I love about it is that, again, it is a relational hymn in that it talks about uh, the many ways in uh, which God is active in our lives and in the world. You.
beautiful and good, celebrate in parable and story, holiness in glory, living, loving God. Hail and hosanna. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, 
and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. We pray, O God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation, for ocean waves, rolling tides, thunderous storms, cedar and oak trees, for rushing waters, and the beauty of the setting sun. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the nations and our leaders that they, with one heart, embrace working on behalf of those whom they serve. And during this Memorial Day weekend, we remember those who have given their lives on our behalf in the armed services of our nation. Help us to honor their memory by devoting ourselves to the causes of justice that will lead to peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray especially for Israel and Palestine, that from death and destruction, a day of peace and renewal may come. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for healing for all those who suffer, especially victims and survivors of trauma or violence. Give respite to Wilma, Sander, Eric, Bonnie, Tina, George, Ed, Ronnie, Patty, Jean, Ruth, Trudy, Bob, Hannah, Marilyn, William, Paul, Liz, Bill, Ruth, June, James, John, Anthony, Maureen, Pat, Linda, Olivia, Susan, Eleanor, Diane, John, Ed, Arlene, Chrissy, Faith, Eric, Lori, David, Bob, Grace, Tom, James, Jacqueline, Ken, all in need, and those we name silently before your throne of grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for this worshiping community and the ministries to which Trinity Lutheran Church is committed that the hungry, the lonely, and the outcasts would be the center of our work, and that the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have died in the faith. Remember all those whose lives have been lost due to the horrors of war. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We share a sign of peace with one another. You may be seated as the offering is received and the table is prepared. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we offer now. Grace our table with your presence and give us 
should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, full of your glory, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. 
United as one in the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit, we pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin given for you. The body of Christ 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 given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. given for you. The body of Christ 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 given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The 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 
body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which you have received, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. 
As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you. Beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over, within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, This is my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for their lands far and mine. This is my 